Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name's Ed, your friendly neighborhood doctor, and today we're gonna to be continuing our look at the fantastic series Scrubs. This is episode five from season one called My Two Dads. You may be thinking, haven't I missed out episode four, My Old Lady? And that's because it's an absolute classic episode. I covered it a couple years ago, so if you're interested in seeing that, I'll leave a link up here. And we forgot to do it on the last episode, but we will be doing a realism rating and a WTF moment of the week. So let's jump into it. Hey, how's he doing? Well, he was admitted with neutropenic fever, but his white blood cell count stabilized. Best I can say is he's not getting any worse. So this kid has neutropenic fever, which is two words you don't want to hear as a doctor. Your neutrophils are the most common immune cell, your most common white blood cell in the body. And neutropenia means you've got low numbers of them usually caused by actually chemotherapy or radiotherapy used to treat certain cancers, but can also be caused by things such as autoimmune diseases, uh, viruses, and also cancers too. As you can probably guess, the biggest concern here from being neutropenic is you're essentially immunosuppressed, so very vulnerable to infections. And this patient has a fever, which is a common sign of an infection. That's why they're so concerned and you'd be really worried about neutropenic sepsis. So therefore this patient would be on antibiotics and fluids and you'd be trying to figure out where that infection is. Anything in the whole world, what could a guy possibly want to see more? Guys, you need an answer. Name one thing guys want to see more than anything in the whole wide world. Okay, uh, Louis, we're gonna go with boobs. Yeah. Show me boobs. <laughs> I see him on a real girl, a cute girl. You're cute. That would be going over and above in medicine. And in fact, would probably get you struck off as a doctor if you did something like that. It seems like the TIBS procedure he's scheduled for is completely unnecessary. Why would you think that's unnecessary? Well, he's dead. <laughs> also, TIBS procedure, man, that is testing the gray matter. So that's a trans jugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt. Nailed it. It's a fairly specialized procedure that you'd offer to people with liver disease, particularly cirrhosis, where the liver's become quite hard, which means the blood can't flow through it as easily. And the blood to the liver comes from the portal system. That's a series of blood vessels that come from the gut and they go via the liver for processing before they go to the systemic circulation. But if this blood can't flow nicely through the liver, then we get raised blood pressure, hypertension within that portal system, and that can cause a bunch of problems. So what we do is we introduce a shunt. So we connect the portal system directly to the systemic circulation rather than going via the liver. In this circumstance, we do it via the jugular vein, hence the transjugular, intrahepatic because it's happening within the liver, portosystemic, so we're going from the portal system to the systemic system and shunt. Tips. Excellent catch, Dr. Dr. Um... Dorian, you see me every day. Say my name. Say it. Martinez. That was the name of the patient, sir. Avery. No, actually, that's the that's the manufacturer of the clipboard. <laughs> Fine work, doctor. Fine. <laughs> that's so funny. It is difficult for senior colleagues because a lot of us juniors do rotate through. I once worked with a doctor for four months, and he thought my name was Ahmed because. When I introduced myself to patients, I'd say, hello, I'm Ed. And he thought I was just saying, hello, Ahmed, to everyone. Even though I would show him my name badge and say, no, my name's Ed, he would, I think he thought that was short for <laughs> Ahmed and would still introduce me as Ahmed to people. What in the name of, are you there, God? It's me, Margaret, were you thinking? Well, I knew here, but I'm relatively certain that invasive vascular procedures have a very low success rate on dead people. <laughs> That TIPS procedure was for Mrs. Blit down in 103. You see, she doesn't have insurance. Mr. Martinez, on the other hand, had great insurance. Should I talk slower or go get a nurse who speaks fluent moron? What? That is, that is insane. Does this type of thing happen? Being from the UK and having the National Health Service, this type of thing blows my mind that as a doctor, you don't just have to navigate what patients need, but also what their health insurance can provide. And there's a bit of negotiation within that, which just, it 
seems so alien to me and I'm glad I don't have to do it. Obviously here, this is a uh, basically fraud to get someone else the procedure on someone else's insurance, but I, I mean, has this type of thing happened? I mean, never say never in medicine, it's probably happened somewhere. Challenge. A little bit of throw, like the chair. Fighting Joe for her. I don't need Dr. Cox, big jerk. I hate him. Yes, yes! I mean, uh, you can understand where they're going from the comedy aspect, but if you ever did that as a doctor, oh my God, that would get you in so much trouble. Plus, if the kid grew up, he might sue you. I mean, it's not taught specifically that you shouldn't show your body parts to patients. I'm just, you just pick up on these things that it's not the right thing to do. Sorry, sir, it's been a rough day. So I hear. Well, anyway, I'm very proud of you, Doctor. Um... Just look at my badge. <laughs> Dr. <Dr>. Turk. <laughs> oh no, this, this is my roommate's badge, sir. We must have switched this morning. We were... Oh, that's a great. See, you just look at the badge. It's that easy. Why did I keep getting called Ahmed? I thought you'd be interested in that kid Jared's chart. Wow, look at that white blood cell count. Yeah. There you go. So his white blood cell count is improving. As we said, the neutrophils are your most common white blood cell. So this is good. This shows that the neutropenia is improving. I would say now though, there's no evidence that exposing yourself to patients <laughs> Improves your immune system. Check our LFTs and our coags for me. I'm sure. Every time I think something, the opposite happens. I am so not having sex this weekend. You're cute. So we can conclude that this is the patient was due to have that TIPS procedure. So that's why we're doing a liver function test, but also a clotting screen. You might think, why are we interested in how the blood clots? Well, for a start, they might be going for a procedure and people can bleed during a procedure, but also one of the main jobs of the liver is to produce proteins, in particular, your clotting proteins. So the ones that actually make your blood clot. So actually people with liver disease, one of the first things that can go off is their clotting. So it can make them susceptible to bleeding. And Mrs. Blood over there needs the TIPS procedure, no insurance. Yeah, well, she can now look forward to a lifetime of encephalopathy and jaundice, thanks to bottom line, blah, blah. So Dr. Cox is absolutely right. So this patient is susceptible to encephalopathy and jaundice. So encephalopathy is dysfunction of the brain. So she'd become very confused, maybe drowsy. And you get this in liver disease because one of the other functions of the liver is to break down the toxins in the body. And if those toxins are going round, they can affect the brain and affect the, how the brain works. And the other symptom Dr. Cox talked about here is jaundice, the yellowing of the eyes or skin. And we probably all think about people with liver disease having this. It's the most sort of classic thing we think of when people have liver disease. And generally people are asymptomatic from it, but it can cause itching. Yo, Elliot, check out these ass slides. Oh my God. How does that stuff even get up there? <laughs> Oh my God, that looks a bit mad. I mean, we've all seen stuff up people's bums on x-rays, but how the hell? This wine bottle here kind of defies anatomy because you'd expect it to go up and then to the left. So going through the descending colon and round, but the fact it goes to the right, I guess the bowel, you know, can move round or the wall is just stretched so much and there's no way you'd be able to pass that naturally. So they're gonna be heading for a laparotomy. And also it defies physics too. Surely you'd need to insert the wine bottle with the neck first. So this is definitely on the extreme end, but I have seen some x-rays that don't look too dissimilar to this. I remember at medical school, I think I've told this story before on the channel, there was a surgeon who showed us a picture of something uh, that had gone via the back passage and it was an abdominal x-ray just like this and it looked like like an action man and someone said, is it an action man? And he said, no. And we all had a few other guesses and he eventually said, it was Buzz Lightyear, which made us laugh because he didn't want to know what the object was so much as the specific name of the figure that was in the back passage. And I guess the punchline of the joke has to be, it gives a new meaning to infinity and beyond. I fell on it. I fell on it? 
I fell on it. I was bored. <laughs> the doctors in the ER have a... You've got to have more respect for the people telling it straight, haven't you? It's one of the most common questions I get asked by people when I say I'm a doctor is what things have you seen people put inside themselves? There is a certain comedy aspect associated with it, but actually in reality, when you see patients like this, it's not funny. You know, I'm trying to be lighthearted on this channel, but it isn't. People are often scared, humiliated, and so you have to be incredibly sensitive when managing these patients. Is that like next to the lost and found box? Lost and found box? <laughs> There's no lost and found box. There's an ass box. Oh no, that's not Carla's pen. I had no time to shop! Oh! Oh! oh my god. <laughs> So the pen that Turk gave Carla came from an ass. <sighs> oh my God. Hopefully he doesn't give her that bottle of wine either. Just let your game do all the talking. <laughs> sort of a uh, certain sense of irony here, the fact that he's been hit on the forehead with a golf ball and the injury will quite literally look like a golf ball. The reason being is your scalp's very thin and so there's nowhere for the inflammation, so the swelling to go. Normally in other parts of the body, a lot of the swelling will be sort of into the muscle, into the soft tissue. And here there's just nowhere for it to go, so all the swelling will look on the outside. So <laughs> that's why it will look like a golf ball on the front of his head when we see it. <laughs> and there we have it. There is the golf ball on his forehead. You know that before medicine ever became a business, the only rule was to do your best to help the patient. Like it or not, medicine is a business. If the hospital shuts down, who are we helping then? So what, only people with money deserve medical treatment? So we see the reason why this episode is called Two Dads. They're both giving reasonable points of view, and I think the take home message is that maybe the system isn't there for the patient. The system is actually there to make money. Still nothing. All right, we're through here. Somebody call it. Wait! Right. Time of death, 620. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, we said earlier that flashing doesn't do much for neutropenia. I can also say it's not recommended in cardiac arrest either. I think sticking to uh, chest compressions and defibrillation, I think that's really the key. Let's just worry about getting you better, okay, gorgeous? I decided that Cox was wrong. There's room to play by the rules and care about the patients. I want you to do a wallop biopsy on her, and if the insurance doesn't check out, I want her back to the nursing home before she so much as gums down a single fruit cup. <laughs> oh dear. Wallop biopsy. I wonder if that is actually a phrase that's been used in places. Certainly nothing I've heard before. You're suspended. Immediately. Well, again, you can't really blame each of them. It's probably broken the rules and broken the law here, but you can see why he's done it. So there you have it, another absolute cracker of an episode of Scrubs. Rating-wise for this one, I think it was less realistic than what we're used to with Scrubs, particularly the bit with Elliot flashing the patients and thinking that helped them. And also, I think this storyline about Dr. Cox getting the procedure done on someone else's health insurance, again, that probably has happened somewhere, but again, I think that's pretty extreme. I would give this one a six out of 10. Um, although obviously the realism doesn't take away from the fact it was amazingly entertaining. I mean, the WTF moment for me, has to be <laughs> Elliot flashing people. I mean, I've never heard anything that bonkers before. And so on that bizarre note, I hope you've enjoyed my look at this. If you have, then please give this video a like and consider subscribing too. And give me a comment too on anything I've missed in this episode. 
As always, thank you so much for all the support on the channel. I hope you're all well and I'll be back soon.